Why do you keep fighting? There is a tempest in me. So the cat's out the bag. You can finally tell people I am in the Lord of the Rings. How's that feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very great. So you can tell people all the spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who are you telling first? Uh, who did I tell first? I think I've told my mum first, actually. Nice. She was in Australia, so but it was quite early morning when I found out in England, so it was sort of dinner time. So it's lucky she was actually awake. Yeah, nice. I told my friend Shannon, who is a massive fan of Lord of the Rings, and... Um, I was like, I'm going to be in the series of The Lord of the Rings. And she was like, oh, really? I was really looking forward to that. Now it's just going to be you. I was like, thank you. Brooke. She was like, well, well done, though. Yeah. You've literally ruined her favourite thing. I know, I have. Yeah. It's just more of it. So, Morford, you play Galadriel. Mm -hmm. But this is a very different Galadriel to the one that we know from the films. Yes. Can you tell us a bit about your version of the character and how she differs? So the Gladriel of the Second Age um, exists thousands of years prior to the Gladriel we all know as the Lady of Lothlorien, and, um, but she's already thousands of years old. And she is convinced that darkness is rising and she's not being believed. And so she's kind of on a quest for vengeance for the dis to discover whatever evil is coming. Um, and she is one track minded and on a mission. Hmm. And you even got to do your own Kate Blanchett style intro video at the start. I did, yeah. That must have been cool. a bit daunting That's though. Very cool. It was daunting. What was great was that I got to see obviously the intro before anyone else. But no, it felt amazing and um it was that intro we did so many different versions of it, um, because it had to be right. Um so that was really fun. And Charlie, you play Halbrand. Yes. He's a very mysterious character. Even mm -hmm. after the two episodes that press have seen, we mm -hmm. don't know much about him. No. Can you give us the basics and maybe a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is, he's a human. So he's come from the Southlands, which is on actually on this poster, which I realised. Um, <laughs> and he, I guess he's leaving his past behind. I guess he's, he's at a crossroads in his life. So, yeah, he's he's... I think he's trying to start afresh, start a new life. And then he meets Galadriel on the on the raft in the middle of the Sundering Seas. And it's quite nice watching their relationship unfold as the season progresses. Yeah. And he's a new character. Yes. He wasn't written by Tolkien. No. Was that quite freeing for you? Well, it's tricky because it is freeing, but it also comes with it a set of expectations and pressure. Because mm. when I'm, as a, as a Tolkien fan, when I hear about a new character, my first judgment on that is like well it needs to these characters need to fit into the law they need to fit into the world they need to have the essence of Tolkien um, running through them otherwise they're superfluous but I think that's what the show has done so well and what the writers have done so well is create these characters that feel like they have always been there um, and they're really necessary 100% necessary um, so it, it, it comes with that expectation but then you also have a bit of freedom because you can use lots of influences from Tolkien's work in building it, yeah. yeah. And this job isn't just an acting job, really, is it? You've got to ride horses, you've got to fight yeah. with swords, you've got to swim. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest thing you had to learn to do for a scene? Um, well, both of us, actually, we had to learn to hold our breaths. Breath? That was probably the hardest. Yeah. Um, breaths. <laughs> breaths. For how long? Um, I got up to three and a half minutes, Charlie got up to four, four ten. Yeah, I'll around yeah. that in the yeah. park. Um, and that was really challenging because unlike everything else where you get better at it, um, yeah. and so it starts to feel better, with breath holding what I learned is that, well, they say this won't stop hurting anymore, you'll just get more used to ignoring the pain. Mm. Um, you get better at yeah, dealing and it with is, the pain. So it's like every time you're like, oh no. Um, but that was really cool. And I, I had spent a lot of time underwater, yeah. which um, I liked. Mm. What about you, Charlie? That was probably the hardest thing. I remember in the training, because we trained to be able to do it for a couple of months in the mm. lead up, and it, I would always dread it yeah, when, when the, so when the session, the weekly session would come around, because you know you're just going to go through excruciating Agony. pain for like an hour. Because mm -hmm. um, you just hold your breath in the pool and then you just do it over and over again for an hour until you, you know. Yeah. You pass out. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, really safe. <laughs> okay, they're done now. That's the end, guys. <laughs> The original cast were known for their adventures in Wellington, like 
partying in the yeah. pubs, skydiving, quad biking. Did you get up to any kind of similar adventures? We did lots of like we didn't skydive. No, probably not allowed. No, we were not. <laughs> we were. I mean, we were in Auckland. Yeah. So, I mean, Auckland's awesome. There's so much stuff to do. Yeah. But I think a lot of us. We. I mean, I know we we travelled around the country yeah. at different points. I went to the, uh, the South Island and did some really cool things down there. Um, and I went hiking was probably the main thing that I did. Tongariro National Park, which is in the North Island, I hiked there quite a lot, which was awesome. It's probably the coolest yeah. thing I did. But the nightlife in Auckland felt very familiar to me because it's quite like Cardiff. I was like one main street yeah. rang happy, <laughs> which is like where everything happens. And I was like, this is perfect. I feel so at home. And did you get to go while hiking maybe to any of the old locations from the original films? Yes, yes. I, well, we both went to Milford Sound, which kind of they filmed lots of stuff around there. Yeah. And it's just the most huge mountains that you kind of, your mind tells you they're smaller than they are, and then you see a big boat next to them that looks like a Monopoly piece. Mm. Um, and that was just wonderful. And I went in wintertime and it was just sparkling with ice. Mm. I went, yeah, at Tongariro, they filmed quite a lot there where I was yeah. hiking. And then there's around Queenstown, I think they filmed quite a bit, Glenorchy. In fact, some of the cast members did a Lord of the Rings tour around Queenstown, not us. So yeah. this is something that I want to do, but you can like members of the public can pay to do this, but it costs seven thousand dollars and takes two weeks. Oh, the whole that's like yeah. the whole New Zealand. You, you go, you go canoeing on the river from the oh films. You hike up around where Mount is meant to be. So this was not that. You can do a canyoning they... Lord of the Rings thing, which I tried to book, and they were like, "This is only in summer because it's so cold in winter, you will die." It's like. <laughs> No, I think some people did like a day tour, yeah, Yeah. around Queenstown. That really sells it. You may die. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I want to do it. This could be the beginning of a new era. What about props? There are thousands of stunning Mm. props in this show. Oh, yeah. If you had to pick one of yours, maybe it's your sword, maybe it's something Mm. from your costume, to take home, what would it be and why? Morph, do you go first? Um, I had a dagger that is t- the two trees of Valinor kind of intertwining. But also, I was wearing lots of stuff with pearls, just I was dripping in pearls to the point that they were literally falling off. And actually, um, lots of the people in costume collected them and made a little necklace for me so I could have mm. something from set because you're not actually allowed to take anything. So that was very precious. Yeah, nice. You're not allowed, but come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Come on. <laughs> I didn't think I actually had that many tangible props. I had some very cool costumes. Yeah, I actually know. I have a pouch. Down and out a lot what about time. my what about oh, yeah, my pouch? pouch. <laughs> Halbrand's pouch that you see actually I think on the raft. It's like a necklace with a little yeah. thing there. Um, I'll take that. Yeah. What's yeah. it made out of? What does it feel like? I don't know. It's made out of leather, kind of like suede, suede it's got leather. A bit of glass in it. And then it has glass. Doesn't it? Oh yeah, no, it does. Yeah. yeah. Then it has like the little emblem on the front, which is cool. And what about the dagger, actually? What is that actually made out of? So there were three different versions. There's one that's um, made out of metal, and um, it's all 3D printed, so it was, like, hollow on the inside as well, amongst the trees and the roots. Really cool. Mm. And there's a bendy one, there's a light one. There's one made out of steel, which you're not allowed to touch the blade of, which, obviously, as soon as you're yeah, giving, you're like, I want to touch good. the blade. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for chatting to me. To me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So many people have waited, like, 20 years for this, and it doesn't disappoint, so well done. Oh, thank, thank you. you. You have not seen. What I